Yeah, so um, I'm in Blacktown and there's this guy on the street preaching Jesus. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> anyway, this Jesus nut, huh? he's like, he's standing there preaching to nobody, just like to the air. So I stood there and he starts saying to me, um, <laughs> says to me, you know, the, the classic stuff, um, Jesus, Jesus died for your sins. <laughs> and I'm just, I'm laughing at him. But at that time, it's all sweet. And I, um, I just said, oh, look, you know, that's, that's mytholo mythology. And, um, you can just stop believing in that because it's just being silly. But he continued with it. He's like, you know, oh, Jesus, this and that. And um, I said, I said, look, it's it's mythology. There is no. <laughs> it's all cyclic proofs and cyclic logic, and I'm 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 not interested, you know. And then he says, you know, you sound like an intelligent guy. Um, he says, if I if I have if I had scientific proof that God is real, then um, would you believe in God? And I said, yeah. He says, yeah. Yeah, all right. And so he launches into, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. <laughs> I'm not laughing. I, you know, inside I'm laughing, but I'm like, okay, cool. And then he says, you know, you're familiar with, you know, space, time, and matter. <laughs> that's when I, oh my, that's when I started laughing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it's awesome. And I'm like, oh, it's space, time, and matter, yep, yeah, that I'm familiar with. <laughs> and he said, oh, God invented that. <laughs> and I said, oh, yeah, um, how, how, how do you know that? <laughs> oh, in the beginning. <laughs> in the beginning. <laughs> and I said to him, I said, Oh, I said, what, okay, now that you've brought up the topic, what is in the beginning? <laughs> I'm like, what is the beginning? And he just looks at me and he goes, um, time. And he's one of these people that thinks he can answer a question by using one word. <laughs> and I'm like, time, okay. So that your answer? I said, no. I said, in the beginning assumes that there was a beginning. <laughs> <laughs> a beginning where well, I mean and my <laughs> oh my god <laughs> anyway um and so I, I, so I explained to him I said we don't know the beginning of time <laughs> it's, like, it's not possible <laughs> and, I, and I asked him I said are you one of these people that believes that you know and I asked how old how old is everything here and he goes what do you what do you mean and I said oh well, are you one of these people that believe that there was <laughs> the time actually began and like 6,000 years ago everything just magic man made everything <laughs> and he goes yeah <laughs> my god oh it's gold and so yeah this is okay that's and I said to him that's hilarious you know there is evidence of like <laughs> yeah you think the Earth isn't 6,000... Reality isn't 6,000 years old. <laughs> oh, my God. Anyway. And I just... I was losing interest. And then he goes, Yeah, but in the beginning, <laughs> God created the heaven and the Earth. It's proof. It's scientific proof. Oh, my God. And I'm trying to tell him. I said, Look, it's a scripture written in the Bible. It's not even relevant today. <laughs> We know more about that stuff. And then I, I tried to explain to him about the real context of when it was written. <laughs> and so I, I started to speak Hebrew. And like, oh, this is awesome. And I said to him, Elohim. Barak. Oh my God, I'm getting some decline. Sorry, I just got interrupted by some system message from Skype. Anyway, so I said to this guy, I said, Elohim, Barak, Eretz, 
Shemayim, and he's like, what's that? And I said, that's the scripture you're quoting in the beginning. God created the heaven and the earth. <laughs> and he's like, who are you? Who are you? And I said, oh, hang on, just don't. It doesn't matter who I am. I'm just, you know, it's just not relevant. And I said to him, I said, look, you know, I know some Hebrew, and just let me explain to you from the Hebrew what it means. And he, he's like, who are you? are you? Are you Israeli? Are you Jewish? Are you from Israel? And he's panicking on the spot. And then he's like, sit down and talk to me. <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh my God, I am just heading into his psychosis. It's like, oh my God. And I've got to not... People, you got to not get involved too much because, yeah, it's silly. And anyway, um, so I said to him, I said, Elohim means the creator. And in the Old Testament, there's like, there's at least six different competing gods. It wasn't one monolithic god in the Old Testament. It was like, <laughs> you, you had freaking Elohim, you had Yahweh, you had like the people of the groves, you had the people in the high places, you had Balaam. <laughs> you know, this whole... Oh, there was one God, you know, <laughs> Jehovah Tsukenyi. It's all, they were all different gods. And what Moses would do is like, if you didn't believe in his form of God, he'd just round you up and kill you. That's, that, he was a fascist. That's just how it was. And I was trying to explain to him, you know, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. Elohim, Ertz, you know, Barak, Ertz, Shemayim. Earth doesn't mean earth or planet. <laughs> earth means just some dirt or land that crops grow from or, you know, trees grow from. It's like, earth is like the earth and earth is like tree or something like that. It's a similar word. It just means land that stuff grows from. And shemayim just means like the sky or the air that birds fly in, like the... You know, the context is birds fly in it. It's not even out of space or anything. So that, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. It's like some lame <laughs> God <laughs> made a strip of land with some air above it. It's like, it's got nothing to do with <laughs> the universe. It's today's whole freaking view on Genesis 1-1 is the universe and planets and the big bang and time and space but the original writers look they were ag they weren't even agriculturalists they were like really oh, probably nomads they had no idea of space and time I mean, you, you're being schizophrenic when you take something so simple from the bible and like wrap it with scientific principles of today it's just mad it's madness it's a, like a psychosis it's like freaking schizophrenia it's like grammar schizophrenia <laughs> so I'm sitting with this guy and I'm trying to explain to him that in the beginning you know his whole statement of that Genesis 1 is scientific proof of God is as unrealistic you know I'm not trying to cut him down too much it's, you know, it's history. The Bible is, you know, part of history to, in a religious sense. And, you know, it's mythology. And, you know, that that's it. That's as far as it goes. And then he's like, oh, you know, the fool in his heart has said there is no God. <laughs> oh, my God. And I tried to explain to him again. I said, of course, a statement like that is going to make it into the Bible. Because it's the Bible protecting itself. It's shaming people that don't believe the Bible. It's like, oh man, come on, just wake up. And I must have said to him, wake up, that many times. And then I started to bring out a few of the morality issues that I had with the Bible. Like, you know, Moses was like, he was a religious fascist. If you didn't believe what he believed, you were killed. And over time, there were... <laughs> Everybody believes what Moses believes because he killed up all the other religions of the time. Oh my God! And that's it became a freaking a death cult 
if you didn't believe what he, what Moses believed, you were killed. And that's why eventually everybody believed. It did become one monolithic religion <laughs> with one God because everybody else is slaughtered. <laughs> it's like, not even funny, is it? It's just, sorry. So, you know, and I explained that to him. I said, look, you know, one of the scriptures, I mean, Moses had his followers go out to other lands and murder and rape. And there's just no doubt about it. You know, if you, in the mythology that was written, Moses would gather all his male combatants and they'd go out to another land and they would murder all the men and rape all the women. That's in there. And then they're commanded to kill all the males in that land and what's the outcome going to be? And I, I'm asking him, and he's like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> he knew. And he's like, and I told him, I said, they're going to fuck every woman. They're going to rape every female on that land. And it's all there in the Bible. And it's the rapes and murders. It's just crazy. And, he, and his comeback is, oh, a man's been doing that for, for thousands of years. And I'm like, that's not the point. That's not a justification for rape and murder. I mean, that's like, that's psychotic. You know, and I explained to him, I said, if God was real and this wasn't mythology, you know, if it was, if it was real, then Moses wouldn't have done that. You know, there's no God would allow that sort of behavior at all. And he wouldn't have it. This guy just, would not have it. It's just like, you know, you try and talk to these people and they uh, just have a one-track mind. Anyway, at the end of it, he's like, oh, do you want to come to one of our meetings? <laughs> like, ah, oh, and it's just, seriously, after all we have said, he didn't understand that I find his whole, you know, religion his whole premise for his religion offensive. You know, I've tried to ex I've tried to explain to him that his scientific reasoning for God being real from Genesis one is just silly, and then that Moses, like those stories about Moses, it's just so it's so immoral. It's just like it's crazy, and then he's like, and he just brutally offends me by go even going even further to you know, invite me to his meeting. Even though I've accused Moses of being a serial national rapist. You know, they've gotten every male of their nation and they're just serial rapists. They're going into other lands, just killing and just raping. You know, and he's just like, oh yeah, yeah, we accept that. Do you want to come along to one of our meetings? Um, it's just crazy. So yeah, I don't know, what do you do? You try and explain the reality of their religion to them and, yep, they don't want to have it. They just continue in their silly world. You know, crazy.